This is Photography 101. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to process black and white photos in Lightroom. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun and I'm so excited about today's tutorial. I woke up crazy early this morning at 3.45 a.m. and went out to the lake in Chicago to do a photo shoot with my buddy Niall and we basically wanted to create a little bit of like branding images. He's a personal trainer so we wanted to get like some really nice shots that actually like showed off as he exercises with this crazy mace that it's just totally cool. So I was like yeah let's go take shots at and, you know by the lake at sunrise and we'll just get some really awesome stuff that you can use for social media and things like that. And I was like this is actually a perfect opportunity for black and white because we can take these photos and make them a little bit more gritty and when you add that like gritty flavor to processing images, black and white really is appropriate because sometimes that can alter your colors a little bit too much. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna show you how to take the original raw files, which you can download on Flurn and process them into black and whites. All right guys, we had a great episode. Let's jump into Lightroom. So here in Lightroom, the first thing we're gonna do is import our photos. So I'm gonna go to file and down to import photos and videos. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna open my Finder window real quick and just click and drag these images straight from Finder here into Lightroom. And you can download these images on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. Now, in this case, they're already on this computer, so I'm just gonna hit Add and hit Import. All right, cool, this was so much fun to shoot. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and create virtual copies of both of these images. And the reason is because I wanna keep the original images as well. So we're gonna keep the originals and convert them to black and white. So we're gonna have two versions of each file. So let's go ahead and shift click on both of the images. We're gonna right click and say create virtual copies. Now, virtual copies are incredibly cool because basically it's just reference, it creates a reference file on your computer. So it doesn't actually duplicate the file itself. So you save a bit of storage and you can process multiple versions of each of your photos. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this photo here. Let's go ahead and double click. Now, the first thing we're gonna do to convert to black and white, we're gonna go up to develop and surprise, surprise, we're gonna click here on black and white. There we go. Now, the main reason I wanna convert this to black and white is because I, I really wanna add some like grit and sharpening and I wanna play around with the shadows and highlights. And a lot of the time you go playing around with your exposure and your highlights and your shadows and doing all this stuff. You can see like I'm really pumping my sliders up and down and we're starting to get something that just, it kind of looks like fake HDR and it kind of looks gross to be honest. So what we're going to do is we are going to do all these slider adjustments, but we're going to do this in black and white. All right. So let's go ahead back here. All right. I'm going to hit black and white. All right. And now let's go ahead and start processing our image in black and white. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna just bump up my contrast because I, I really want this to be a contrast type image. So the main deal with black, black and white in Lightroom is that you can really push and pull your sliders way more than you can in color. So I'm gonna take my highlights and we're gonna bring those down quite a bit. That's gonna help our sky just get a little bit darker. Next, I'm gonna take my shadows and I'm gonna bring those up quite a bit. All right. We're gonna bring our whites up a little bit and I'm gonna pull my blacks, yeah, we'll pull our blacks up a little bit as well. Now, the next thing I wanna do is really add like some punch because these are like athletic type images. I, they really lend themselves to like, uh, kind of like super sharp and super like clarified basically. So in Lightroom, that's here under clarity. So I'm just gonna take my clarity and in this case, I'm just gonna crank it like almost all the way up. I'm gonna go up to like plus, yeah, we'll say like plus 75 or so. There we go. And it just gives the image just a little bit, let's just see the before and the after with the clarity. Just gives the image just a little bit more of a punch to it. Now, after doing that, you can come in here and still work on your contrast. I'm gonna just bring this up just a little bit more. So again, I'm just pushing and pulling these sliders like pretty much way more than I would normally do. Now, the next thing we wanna look at here is our black and white. And this is our black and white mix. Now, the black and white mix, basically you can, choose what was originally in this photo red, for instance, you can make them darker or lighter. Now you don't need to go crazy, but you'll notice people's skin for the most part is made of red, orange, and yellow. 
Okay, so as you take these sliders and move them back and forth, you, you can get different effects. So if, here we're targeting yellow, which in this case is mostly the sunrise. So I'm gonna actually crank that up because it's kind of like, it's bringing that, like the light that's behind now. It's, you know, kind of enhancing that a little bit and that, that's kind of what looks really cool in this photo. Orange is gonna affect our skin tone as well. Now we do have some blue here, okay, some blue in the sky. And in this case, I'm gonna click and drag that way down and look at that really nice, cool, nice vignette we have in the sky. So we're dragging that way down and then aqua, in this case, not doing a whole lot. Now, when you're in black and white, a lot of people like to do split toning as well, adding a little bit of color to the highlights and shadows. So to do that, simply go to your split toning option. You can crank up the saturation here just a little bit and then choose what color you'd like to add to your highlights or shadows. Like give it a sepia type, sepia tone look here, you know, a little bit of a cooler look. In this case, I'm gonna go take my saturation all the way down because I just want this to be a strict black and white. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna look at here is our detail, and I do wanna sharpen this photo. So I'm gonna click here and click on our subject's eye. There we go, so we can get a nice preview of our sharpening. In this case, what I wanna do is I wanna bring our radius up quite a bit, and we're gonna to start to bring our amount up. And my basic goal here is, in this case, because we have like a gritty sports type image, I wanna add as much sharpening as I possibly can without it looking uh, really bad, basically. So you're gonna start by bringing your radius way up. That's always where you start with your sharpening, and then you can start by bringing your amount up. So let's go ahead and click and zoom in just to make sure, yeah, we'll bring our sharpening down just a little bit. Sometimes if you sharpen too much, the skin starts to look really bad in Lightroom. So I don't recommend going overboard there. But in this case, bringing your radius all the way up and then sharpening up just a little bit, maybe about halfway, works really, really well. Okay, now next, because we are using, like basically, you know, creating a black and white image here, I'm gonna add a little bit of grain as well. So this is here in the effects tab in the develop menu. So I'm in the develop menu here. We're gonna go to effects and I'm gonna add a little bit of grain as well, just to give it a little bit of like a more, there we go, let's just kind of zoom in and take our grain down to zero and bring our grain up. Now a lot of the time <laughs> we're like obsessed with shooting at a low ISO so we don't get any noise in our photo and that's totally cool. But sometimes it's appropriate to add that noise back. And in this case, a black and white conversion, a lot of the time I like to add a little bit of noise back. I find it just gives it a more analog feel. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And uh, yeah, size and roughness look totally good. So that's the bulk of my black and white conversion here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and convert this into a preset. So you can see our presets are located right over here, still in my develop tab. So we've got our presets. Now I'm gonna click on this plus sign here and I'm gonna create a new folder. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'll just call this Nile. There we go. because. That's, <laughs> this is Nile in this picture. Okay, now I'm gonna hit check all to make sure that all of my settings are going to be synced in this preset. And I'm gonna name this preset Nile BW for black and white. And let's go ahead and hit create. Okay, so now that we've created a preset in Lightroom, I can then apply this preset to any other photos I did in the photo shoot. So let's jump back into Lightroom and show you how to apply this to our other virtual copy. So to apply this preset to our other image, we're gonna go right down here in our film strip. Now, if you don't see your film strip down here at the bottom, simply click this arrow to bring it up. So I'm gonna click this and bring it right up. So we have our original image here, the virtual copy, and then our original and a virtual copy. So let's click on our virtual copy here. Again, we're still in our develop tab, and I'm gonna simply go right over here to my presets. You can see we have our Nile folder and Nile BW for Nile black and white. So now we're gonna be matching the look from both of these images. Now, in this case, we have like another little bonus here. We're gonna to go to our graduated filter. There we go, let's go ahead and click there and I'm gonna click on the top and hold shift and simply drag down. There we go. And in this case, I'm gonna take my exposure and just drag that down within my graduated filter. And basically this is just gonna give me a little bit more of a dark sky. And I wanna stop it right about there so it doesn't cover our subject's face. All right, let's bring it down just a little bit more. If you need to erase it a little bit, like if it does cover your subject's face, simply go here where it says mask. I'm gonna click on brush. And then if you paint over your subject with that little plus, it's going to add the effect. Hold alt or option and it's gonna subtract away. So in this case, I'm holding alt or option 
There we go. And just subtracting that away from our subject there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring our, let's bring our contrast back down to zero here. We'll bring our highlights to zero. There we go. So I really just wanna work on my exposure here. All right, just making the sky just a little bit darker. All right, guys. Well, that's all there is to it. Let's go to our library. Okay, I'm gonna hit G for our grid mode. And now, let's go ahead and make these a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hit Shift Tab, which is going to make all of my, uh, all my menus go away. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit N for survey view so we can see all of our images. So select all your images and then hit N for survey. So here we can see we have our original image and our black and white conversion, our original image and our black and white conversion. And I think, I'm, I really like the black and white images in this case, I, I think they really work. The color ones work for me as well, but I, in, in this case I like the gritty black and white images. Now, this is also really cool because it's incredibly easy to do, especially because we created virtual copies. So for instance, when you do a shoot like this for your friends or clients, you can then deliver them both the original color image and the black and white image. It's really not that much more work for you and it gives your client a ton more to work with. All right guys, that's all there is to processing black and white images in Lightroom. Now, don't forget you can download these files on flurn.com and share your work. We wanna see your black and white versions because obviously you can process these totally differently. So go to the share your work section on flurn.com and make sure you upload your images. Thanks so much guys, I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone. Aaron's dance lessons. Ah! <laughs> Okay guys, that's how we download an image. No, I can't do it. <laughs> all right guys, that's all there is to downloading. No, I can't do it. I'm not that coordinated. <laughs>